Uh, welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande, and if you've watched gay porn in the past 12 years, I've definitely helped you get off. Uh, so my guest today is fucking awesome. I've worked with him for... Uh, oof, I worked with you first time in 2013, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, award-winning um, international gay porn star, um, <laughs> Armand Rizzo. How are you? I'm doing pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. been it's been a minute. I've been talking about you. You've probably been on the podcast more than you know. Ooh. So yeah, you've probably <laughs> you've probably been on the part the podcast more than anybody I know without actually being on the podcast because um, your name comes up a lot. A lot of people do say um, one of the when when I first started, uh, some of the questions that I would ask were, "Who has been your best or your favorite bottom?" And um, you know, I went from best bottom to worst bottom and all that stuff, but eventually like i didn't want to kind of like we were talking about before i didn't want to bring that energy in right uh -huh. you don't want bad bottoms you don't want like the worst situation so no, only see the positive side. yeah yeah so we had um <laughs> hans berlin and um a couple of other people named you so you were <laughs> you wonder my ears have been burning yeah. for a while <laughs> so yeah so you've been named for a minute so um i'm glad that you are on uh we're here in uh beautiful sin city las vegas right it's Vegas. Yeah. What brought you to Vegas? <laughs> the Gavians. Yeah. Yeah. This is not your first time here, right? Uh, Vegas or Gavians? Um, Gavians. Uh, th I think my second time. Okay. And last year you took home what award? Uh, Best Duel with Max Connor. Okay. Yes. Where you made your infamous Daddy speech. Or cock. You can talk to her. <laughs> okay. We got a crew in the back. They're uh, helping us out, Champ Robinson and... Oh, uh, Champ Robinson's new shooter, e -Rex Shen, right? Is that your name? e -Rex Shen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a, um, a multiracial crew in the back as well, so that's okay. always cool. Um, so, yeah, so uh, basically I wanted to get you on because um, you have a lot of fans. A lot of people know who you are. Do a lot of people know the like what, what puts Armand Rizzo together? Mm -hmm. And I think they do because you are very vocal on Twitter. Um, but I did want to talk to you and just, you know, see how everything came about. Um, when I met you, you had originally had a different porn name yes. from a different porn life. Uh, it wasn't really a different porn life. It was just different times. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were living in a time period where if you did bareback porn, you couldn't work for major studios, mm -hmm. uh, condom studios. So... I thought, I don't know why I thought that was genius. <laughs> I was like, what if I have w one name for bareback porn mm -hmm. and one name for condom porn? So uh, Armand Rizzo came for condom porn, and then I couldn't think of one for bareback porn. And at the time, my agent, uh, Shane Frost, he's mm -hmm. like, well, I like Joey Rodriguez. I'm like, all right, we're going to use that. And it, it, it's simple. He named me basically. Like, okay. It was one of those easy, like, I didn't really put that much thought. I'm on Rizzo, put a lot of thought into it. But um, I think I just saw it in a business perspective of mm -hmm. like, what is very, like, what name rolls out that is in a way kind of like following like the guy guy and all the pop stars mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. you know, method of names that stick out that, you know, will definitely make you stand out. Um, and also Googling and see if that name has been used because yeah. a lot of people still continue to use the same freaking name. So wait, so Joey, Ro <laughs> Joey Rodriguez was supposed to be your, your bareback porn name. Just bareback. And then eventually what, when did you decide? A blogger to okay. called me out. Oh. I was like, that's why I said, I'm like, what made me think that I was going to get through oh. this, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but it didn't at that time, I feel like major studios caught on, mm -hmm. um, and just allowed me to work. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's kind of weird. I think I was one of very few people that was allowed yeah. to do that. I, and then after that, allowed a, a lot of other people to, that wanted to do bareback porn that felt like, well, if I do, I'm mm -hmm. not going to work for Falcon anymore. Well, I think that you and um, there were definitely a couple of other models who kind of broke that barrier where they were like, well, they're doing bareback porn, but they're hot. And they're good, so maybe we can, you know, it's a condom. That's what it's for. We're gonna use it for con, and then eventually, I think it was it was kind of like the don't up. ask, don't tell. Mm -hmm. It kind of became the don't ask, don't tell. Like you really wouldn't be allowed oh, in condom okay. studios to talk about anything bareback. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, honestly, I was like, okay, I can do this because I was in the military when Don't Ask, Don't mm-hmm. Tell was about. So I'm like, I know how to play this game. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. So I won't talk nothing nasty about cum, you know, getting bread, <laughs> nothing like that. Like, all right, got it. And it's that's how they. It, it's kind of like also like when you come out and some family members say they're okay with it, but they don't talk about mm-hmm. your life because this is his friend, you know. Yeah, <laughs> when, exactly. When you bring over. <laughs> exactly. So it's basically the same thing. You mm-hmm. kind of just ignore it, and mm-hmm. you just. I don't know. That, that's how the, it felt. Okay. When you were on set, it was kind of like very taboo to even mention. Mm. And now look at that. Everybody's making money. And look at it. <laughs> All look the at studios. it. They followed the money trail <laughs> and now they're copying everyone. Yeah. No, it's, it's almost crazy. You know, um, I talked to Max in the city a lot and he's very Max from uh, Tim. And he's like, it's not even taboo anymore. It's not anything. He's like, is it fun? And I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, there's still hot people coming through. It's just a different time. It's very different from, 2013, 2014. Uh, yes. And some studios were even ballsy enough to make it uh, into, like, go from condom to bareback without even saying anything. The most vocal people that were anti-bareback. <laughs> Lucas. Yeah. I was, I was, oh, he was, yeah. I've, I've tried to have I, him I on have the, no shame. No Pe- People have I've tried to have me him on say the that <laughs> fucking name because I've had, I've had some of my worst experiences working for that man. Mm-hmm. To the point that I, I'm a tough motherfucker. I know I am. But there's so much you can fucking take. Mm-hmm. And I remember this was in Florida. It was so fucking intense. Just the energies in the fucking room. Mm-hmm. And here I am with the smile, like, trying to make everyone, like, happy. and Because I'm just that kind of person. I mm-hmm. hate negative space environments like i i don't do well in those mm-hmm. spaces um, um you get a crazy version of me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after a while but literally i was at the fucking airport crying really i was like, like it was pouring out of me all that negative energy i i, I i've never after a shoot shoots um be at the airport and just bawling mm-hmm crying like that that shit just really happened so needless to say you never worked with him again correct absolutely okay. not. yeah absolutely well, not he's been invited on so we'll see if you know he wants to come on and say anything about it but you know like i said you know whenever people come up on the podcast they're more than welcome to come on and and um clarify or you know yes whatever if they if to they clarify to, yeah. yeah exactly to, to yeah. get get their story because there is two story you know there's mm-hmm. Two versions of us, yeah. every story, yeah, so, yeah. or more than that. You know, that. I, I am with you there when it comes to um, relaxed environments. Hopefully, every every set that I've tried to, to be on, uh, models are very important to me, especially because of the fact that without them, the studio doesn't have a studio. Mm-hmm. And that's very, very prevalent now because of the fact that everyone's doing only fans and just for fans and the studios are hurting. But if you were treating the models a little better, I feel like. It's a give and take. You know, because models are hurting studios. Studios hurt the models way back when. Uh, and now it's kind of like every, it's, it's kind of like the Wild West. You know, it, it's the pendulum of life. Mm-hmm. You know, every time it swings one way, I think it fits into our politics as well. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever the pendulum swings too far to the right, it's going to swing just as hard mm-hmm. to the left. Mm-hmm. And that's how it's been with porn studios and performers. Mm-hmm. It's always... At one point, porn studios have all the power and everything like that. And then we get OnlyFans and all these things and the pendulum swings back in our favor. Mm-hmm. Now we have power and control of our finances. Yeah. Now we don't have to have models be depressed because they don't have a life because they're so fucking busy traveling. They mm-hmm. literally give up your personal life. You don't have one. People think it's glamorous, but it's not. It's mm-hmm. like you give up everything like you see your friends your family at home enjoying birthdays and all that and you're over here chasing the money chasing the dream of you know becoming something Mm -hmm. and you just work 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 but when you don't it's like well how am i gonna pay rent yeah how am i gonna pay bills and then people then start getting depressed performers start getting depressed Mm -hmm. of like when is my next paycheck coming from where is it coming from so right now it's like I see how it affects the studios, but I feel like that's like, all right, it's your turn. What are you going to do to mm-hmm. evolve and grow as a studio, mm-hmm. you know, to keep up with this? Are you going to stay, continue doing old school shit yeah. and not listen to younger people that see a better vision for studios to survive? Or are you just going to continue to listen to the 
people that have been working in the industry for like been in control and mm-hmm. in charge of the major studios for so long, yeah. you know, same directors, same well, people, you well, know. See, when I was uh, when I when I was constantly on the road, I spent a lot of time with models. And I also spent a lot of time trying to convince studios, oh, well, we should use this person. This person is going to be really good with this. And hearing, uh, well, you know, we used that person already too many times. Fuck them. Like, let's use somebody else. Let's get somebody else. That's always what I heard. Uh, when it came to models that I liked, I had a rapport with. Or, and I'm sure that's not the only studio that would talk like that. So studios were, in a way, giving models a lifespan in the in the industry and all of these people were now finding themselves not without work and you know they put up videos for free if anything they, twitter wasn't it what it is now when it comes to like promoting yourself and stuff mm-hmm. so these people were gone from the studios but their fans were still there so this was perfect this was bound to happen and if the studios were smarter they would have realized something like this was going on but they're not because they have producers and shooters going around and they're too busy uh, trying to get the the setups and the scenes, you don't. If you're not paying attention to the models and what they're going through, like you're gonna miss a lot of things. And and like I said, models are very important to the studio. Yeah. And now they know that. Uh, <laughs> I I have built a career simply by not ever being tied down to one thing and mm-hmm. just simply doing it my way. And I've also realized I do have a large fo- following. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, to me, I just see it as like, oh my God, like there's a lot of people that wish they had this kind of attention, but what am I going to do with that attention? Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Because to me, that's power. When there's a lot of people waiting to see what you're going to post, what you're going to say, that's power. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do with that power? Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't, I, I never you're gonna really- take a picture of your food or you're going to exactly help or, out. <laughs> or exactly help out. Uh, speak up about things that you know other people are thinking about, but people are afraid to say. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, I understood that I'm not the only one out there that believes in certain things mm-hmm. and sees things my way, all that, you know. And I just, I just like to put it out there, but because I don't see myself as just a performer because I've always worked to, to basically change the way people look at adult entertainers. Mm-hmm. We're not dumb we're not stupid there we have intelligent great like uh amazing people like every time i hear someone's like oh yeah i went to school for this and this and this i'm like what Mm -hmm. i'm like if you sit down and listen to performers of stories you'll know that there is so much that within them there is so much more that they've gone through in their personal lives to get to where they are now you know like i fucking hated myself i fucking almost committed suicide so many fucking times you know but I'm in front of a camera naked because my journey to get there was fucking crazy. But the fact that I'm there and I feel comfortable and happy and I love myself for mm-hmm. once, like that's my journey. But people don't take that mm-hmm. into consideration. Um, but yeah, I just I just want to showcase that there's more to us than just an ass and a mouth mm-hmm. and a dick. Me too. You know, I feel the same way. You're a little more. You have a bigger following. You have you. You're very much more vocal uh, than I think I've been. Uh, but I'm trying to get there. And one of the things I do like that I see on your Twitter is you're uh, you're vocal about diversity. Um, did you have a hard time when you were going through like in the beginning uh, casting and all of this stuff for studios? Did they see you as a hindrance or something were you like a token or did they see you as oh hey here's you know another hot latin guy let's 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 bring him in i think i was more of a token Mm. i it kind of i heard it a lot from people that literally saw like two three years they're like oh it's just a little niche they're gonna get over it Mm. you know (laughs) and i literally they gave me a a two three year lifespan Mm. because that's normally the lifespan for a bottom in fucking major studios Short, yeah, you know, right. seven years. I look back yeah. and I'm like, I'm surviving bottom. <laughs> I just constantly think too. I'm like, what? you know, he's nominated this year, and that's why I thought I was like, I feel like he's won so many awards for it. So many people hold you up as like the 
the bottom to go to. Uh, Luca Demora, I just saw him yesterday. He's like, I love that kid. He's my <laughs> icon when it comes to bottoms. And I'm like, awesome. Yeah, you know, he is. It's funny because I don't really see it like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? I, I, like, I, to this day, I still feel like I'm still, I don't know what I'm chasing. I guess I'm just chasing my own tail. Because mm. I'm like, <laughs> have I made it yet? Have I made it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People are like, how does it feel? I'm like, how does it feel what? I'm like, hearing these things is great. And I, you know, like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. thank you. Um, but deep down, there's still the hustler in me that just wants to keep going. Like, all right, what's next? What mm-hmm. next? Cause I'm constantly evolving. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm growing my fucking hair out and mm-hmm. I'm learning beyond more about myself and my sexuality. Well, growing your hair out has been quite an issue as well, <laughs> hasn't it? On, on at least your Twitter. Every time I see your Twitter, I'm like, what is this person going on about? I saw something the other day. And you answered, you answered uh, relatively well. I think you. you I'm learning it. too. I am it. so learning. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm learning how to yeah. do it because I'm I'm learning in being around other people that I can talk to mm-hmm. about other things other than porn. Mm. Um, I just love raising my mind mm. and just having other people that I can just like exchange energy and exchange levels of intelligence it's just just to even get your mind blown by other people Mm because you can still do that yeah you can still blow people's minds um this guy (laughs) uh said something oh you know i remember when you were representing like i think he said representing mexican or spanish people back when and you're like still am and i was like good for him that's exactly what he should say and that's how it should be yeah that's how you, you deal with these things. Yeah. How are you it's gonna like, bring someone else down? Like the fact that he's bringing someone else down, that's even out there and putting the voice out there. It says more about them than it does about yeah. me. And that's what I've realized mm. in this whole journey about learning how to manage or just run accounts where people are gonna give their fucking ten cents mm. even if you didn't ask for it. Mm. <laughs> and even though it's not even a pretty one. But it shows where they're at their place because I remember I used to be in that place. I used to respond like mm. hardcore, but in a way I read back now and I'm like, you were a fucking angry person. Like what was wrong mm. with you? But I'm in a much more peaceful place now. And now I can, I can see and I can separate myself like, okay, you said that, but it has nothing to do with me. Baby. Mm-hmm. It has it's all you. It has nothing to do with <laughs> yeah. me. It's not mine. Um, and I just simply return back to like what you said has not impacted me. And when he said you, you embarrass us as Mexicans yeah. and I was like no bitch like I'm a proud yeah. fucking Mexican <laughs> and I, I'm doing fucking justice yeah. to my people I'm doing just fine mm-hmm. you cannot move me from where I am mm-hmm. because your words do not affect my peace and, and where I am in my life so how does it make you feel like that something that small like the fact that you're growing out your hair bothers people like isn't that fucking crazy? It, it's fucking like how because is that affecting? They're jealous. Any, how is that affecting everything <laughs> else that you do? It it does not. It, honestly, it does not. Like how do they think that? Like because they're so jaded. Mm. Because people are just envious of what other people have and they want instead of hey, you know what, I'm gonna try and grow my hair out. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, I'm just gonna bring this person down a pedal mm. or two, and it's like. You don't have that power. Sorry. And the sad thing is they don't even know they're doing that. I think that they don't. Yeah. There's so there's, there's, there's this thing. They're not self-aware. Yeah. They're, they're lacking self-awareness. I feel like a little, we, we need to get back to that. Mm-hmm. People need to be self-aware. It's going to be hard, but I think, of yeah. Looking within yourself, like literally stare at a fucking mirror. Mm-hmm. It sounds crazy, but talk to your fucking self. Like, don't look at me like that, bitch. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm right. You need to stop doing that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to be honest, but at the same time, be kind mm-hmm. and loving to yourself and patient with yourself. You know, you don't always, like, I'm stupid. Like, no, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Like, be kind and patient and celebrate any little baby step that you mm-hmm. make. And just changing your mindset of, like, you know, I could say this negative thing. Or I can shut up and go to the beach, go mm-hmm. for a hike, go do something else. You know, something that will impact my life in a in a positive way Mm -hmm. instead of me putting out negative energy instead i'm choosing to put out positive energy because that's what i want in return Mm -hmm. i you know i i'm right there with you i just have i made a comment the other day actually just recently um it's so hard because we're constantly being bombarded with negative imagery negative tv like you go out on the strip all it is is you know buy this buy that you need this you need that and it's it's so jarring and I can see how people who, you know, are on the cusp of maybe um, 
awareness can get stuck because of the fact that we are constantly bombarded with, uh, you know, your life will be better if you have this. Your life will be better if they have money, 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 money. Like it's all about having stuff. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I I, I do I, I absolutely agree with you. I just hope that people can can get to that level. Exactly. Like, that's that's what you can hope for. That's basically like self awareness. And, and, and like I've been in trains from San Diego to LA, mm-hmm. and I've I've been on trains where it's like it's supposed to be business. Mm-hmm. Lights are turned off for a reason. Because it's supposed to be quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking sleep. Mm. Have a shoot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm heading to. I'm like, I woke up <laughs> super early. I'm not into this, you know? And there's people that come in and are fucking drunk and being loud. Mm. And it's like, aren't you self aware of what? Like, this is not your car. Mm-hmm. This is not a truck, like, where you can do this shit, like, or party bus. Mm-hmm, so you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, there's people here that you don't know what they're going through. But you're not aware of the fact that you being loud as fuck while there's someone next to you who probably just got fired mm-hmm. and they're lost somebody. They're lost. Something, yeah. Someone has lost some. Yeah. Like you don't know what people are going through, but you're only thinking about your fucking self. Mm-hmm. You're not aware of what your actions or how you're being can impact someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's all about looking within yourself like, okay. How are other people perceiving this? You know, like, I'm not saying don't be yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's different. Another thing is just not taking other people into consideration mm-hmm. of you being loud as fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not just your world. <laughs> it's not just we your world. We got to share yeah. it together, yeah. especially if you're using public transportation. Mm-hmm. You know, you're yeah. not the only one in that train car. Yeah, because <laughs> there, there are times where I'm just like, oh, God, why am I doing this? But then I'm like, whatever, man, because... Everyone else is doing it. That's why. Because when I take the train into the city and stuff, um, it's it goes from. Uh, it's gonna. It sounds snooty, but it, you know, I go from where I live, and then once you start getting close to the city, it gets rougher. And I, I'm from there. I'm from where it gets rough. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up there, so I know, and I can tolerate it. But there are times where I'm like, "Fuck!" I understand why people say certain things, or why Trump is, you know, has the power that he does because people piss other people off. But it's not just. Shouldn't be just color that pisses people off. Exactly. There's that's different I've met, yeah, too. I've met I've met people of all <laughs> colors that pissed me off, or I've probably pissed off. So it's it's you know looking at exactly. it at one person or putting the blame on one group altogether, as opposed to just you know everybody's a bit of a dick sometimes. Everybody's had a bad day. And and, and we all go through fucking shit equally. Mm-hmm. Like it's different, but we all go through you know th- different things, but. The common things that we can look at is the fact that we we all want the same things mm-hmm. at the end of the day, and that is happy families, uh, everyone in peace, um, enjoying their life, mm-hmm. um, and health and security. And you know, like yeah. I feel like, but we 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 don't look at the bigger picture. The fact that that's there's there's common so much more mm-hmm. in common, mm-hmm. you know around the world but we see the other things of like medicare and da 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 and the battles for like and it's like if, if you take everything else down and you look at the main things we all want the same thing mm-hmm. we all want to be happy well that's you know you kind of like you said with medicare and stuff it's not not just that it's you know religion it's politics it's so many different things that so many are things put in that are like to, fillers yeah, in just to, to kind of divide. divide and that's basically what it is divide and conquer is you know that's all you can you, you can go back to any war in history and i'm th- talking about war with people and just classes and everything it's divide and conquer it is. um great story um in the bible right um babel t- the tower of babel I I'm sorry I do not no know worries. anything about the Bible. Tower of Babel. <laughs> ba- we got Babel from you know the Babel the app or the um, the thing now that exists. Be- if you want to learn a different language, you you, you download it. I'm not going to say the name of it again because I'm not endorsing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, unless they're going to send I've never me a heard check. Of it. I never heard of <laughs> yeah. it. I'm, I'm I'm I tell people I'm like I'm I'm more spiritual than than religion. Yeah. But but here's like here's where I tell people I'm like my religion didn't teach me kindness. Mm. How to love people. Yeah, I have it. I'm like, so for you to tell me that I needed, I, I need to be either a Christian or mm-hmm. like have, you know, believe in God, like their way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's not the, the only way to learn 
how to be kind, mm -hmm. you know, how to be respectful, how to be loving and caring. Like, I still learn those things without that. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me that religion is the only way for me to learn these morals. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you know, you can be religious and you can, you can be a dick and be religious and you're going to be a religious dick. If you're a nice person and you're religious, you're going to be a nice person. I, I get exactly. it. There's, there's, I, I'm not going to take religion away from anybody. I can't, no. although I feel that way. I'm, I'm very anti-religion because I absolutely feel like it divides, but you can't like, you know, my grandmother, she's 95. I'm not going to tell her God doesn't exist. You know, like I mean, I'm going to destroy her world. She dies the next day, knock on wood, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm the, I'm, I'm the same way with my mom. She's still like, you know, she's a Mexican yeah, mom. She yeah, gives yeah. me the, <laughs> the, thing. the thing, you know, like she gives me all of that, you yeah. know, like, but I'm not, I'm not going to like stop her because I've learned that this has brought her peace. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to take that away mm -hmm. from her because if this is what keeps her peaceful, because she did it a lot when I was in the military and every time she said goodbye to me, it meant more mm -hmm. to her. Um, so I like, just don't push it on me, mm -hmm. but there's different instances where it's like, I see, I see what it means to my mom. And so I, I'm not going to take that away yeah. from her because all I want from her is peace. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Let's let's go back briefly. Let's touch on uh, you're a military man. You're a vet. Yeah, right. Navy vet. So when um when did you enlist? When did you go in? What was that like? <laughs> uh, the story starts at my high school. Our senior year, we were at at um, the auditorium. We're gonna have our senior thingy where they tell you what's next and all that. And I sit down next to my best friend, and she's she's like, "So, have you filled any college applications?" No. So what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. It's like, you don't know? I'm like, no. It's like, okay. After school, we're going to jo go join the Navy. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Literally, that's how it happened. I, she dragged me over there. We went. Um, and I joined in 2008. I turned 18 July 19. And a month later, literally, August or September. August, was after July. I'm like having brain farts. Here. August, August, August nineteenth. I went into boot camp. Wow! And she came in the day be uh, after me okay. into boot camp. So she was there at my graduation, like the flags and all that. And yeah, it was. Then we got stationed together in Norfolk, Virginia. We lived together, but I got out in 2012 because I hated. Yeah. I was like, send, send me to the desert. Send me anywhere. <laughs> but Virginia. But Virginia. I'm like, just get me the fuck out of here. I mm. was beyond over it. And I was going to re-enlist. Um, I'm like, can I get orders? They're like, no, you got to stay here three more years. I'm like, Jeez. I'm out. Mm. I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, no, no. I'm like, I'll finish my contract, but deuces. Because I literally, when they asked me, I looked around and there's not a single person in there that inspired me to stay, that I want to be like, mm. I want to get there. Because everybody from like in their 20s, 30s, 40s, you look at them, they were miserable. They mm. hated their life. And I'm like, I'm too fucking young to become one of them and hate my own life. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for the day just that you can waiting. retire and then just, exactly. yeah, it's not worth it. I'm like, <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm glad that I looked up and I'm like, Give me one fucking reason why I should re-enlist. Like, show me someone. Mm -hmm. And there was no one. And that's why I got out. I was like, no, I can't do this. Um, and I got in, I got out in August 19, 2012. Okay. And how, um, how was Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Because I was still there, right? Or was it? It was. It, it, kind, it, it was removed, mm -hmm. like, towards my yeah, last year remember. in. I think like in 2011, 2012 is when they okay when they took it down, but they honestly didn't care. I was the captain's cook on board the USS George H. W. Bush, and I his office was literally next door to my, my little galley, and it's thin metal walls. I can hear everything, and I would see these guys coming in no. straight out of boot camp, <laughs> going into the captain's office, wanting to speak to him, and he's like, "What's up, shipmate?" Like. Sir, uh, 
want to say I'm gay. And it's like, okay, and? It's like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I just want to let you know. And it's like, okay, get your ass back to work. Okay, so it was like that. So I saw yeah. that. And on top of that, I was like, even when I worked in the wardroom, like, my senior chief was a woman. Mm-hmm. And she would always task me to do all the garnish, to go on top of the line, like the blooming onions and the rose petals out of tomatoes and all that stuff that you see at buffets. And I would like color coat, like (laughs) make it all pretty and fancy. And I would like do cakes with like purple flowers and all these beautiful arrangements. And I'm like, I know the bitch knows I'm gay. (laughs) How can you not know I'm fucking gay? (laughs) I'm like, and she's a woman on top of that. I'm like, I know the bitch knows. You know, so I tell people, I'm like, no, honestly, towards towards the end of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, people don't really give a shit anymore. Mm-hmm. It's it's just more of like, can you do your job? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, all that's what it should asking. be, too. Yeah. Can you do your job? And can I trust my life? You know, that mm-hmm. you're, you're if I'm not unable, that you're going to be able to help me out. Mm-hmm. You know, like my, my life is in your hands. Mm-hmm. Like I can trust you. You're not going to stop and say, Hey, wait a minute. Are you straight or gay? Exactly. Before, you know, like, no, we before have a, you save my life. We have a mission. Yeah. We have a fucking mission. Let's yeah, get yeah. it done. But I saw that. So when a lot of people tell like, okay, a lot of people have their stories, but they're not telling you a lot of the shit that they've probably done. They're mm. like, Oh, I got kicked out cause I was gay. And like, really? Mm. How did it happen? <laughs> You know, like, and a lot of people hold out, and their stories always change. And mm-hmm. it's like, be honest. Like, you did some stupid shit you weren't supposed to do, mm-hmm. and then you got caught. Like, no, like they didn't kick you out because you were gay. It's because you you were doing something that you weren't fucking supposed to do, and you knew that. Mm-hmm. You know, because <laughs> I would have gotten kicked out a long yeah. time ago, yeah. but I didn't. Why? Because I did my fucking job. <laughs> so, um. If we go to war with Iran, are you trying to... Oh, I'm fucking done. <laughs> You're done. I That's... did my four active <laughs> okay. and four inactive. The okay. government can't touch me. I got my DD-214. <laughs> That's amazing. I already put up my fucking time. What about the people that keep fucking claiming they're proud Americans, oh, patriots? Yeah. Like, Send them off That want to hold a rifle yeah. and have the right to? All mm-hmm. right. How about if you go use it? Here's mm-hmm. your time. Come on. You want to protect America? I, Go down and put on the fucking uniform. You it's, keep it's funny you say that. I, th- I, I think that's that's actually a really good uh, a thing to introduce. Here's where you can, if you want to shoot guns, where your, this is hey. where your money, where yeah. you can put your fucking yeah, your money. You want to shoot? You want to shoot guns? You want to shoot at, guns? At uh, you want to defend uh, the country? People from other countries? Uh huh. You know, like you two on a well-trained militia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well-trained they're, militia. They're gonna it's gonna called the military. Back. They're going to be shooting back. That's just that's what they have to like, exactly come to the realization of. That's why when I get political, I'm like, yeah, I, I fucking know. serve and all this shit going on with Iran and everything like that. Yeah. It's like, all right, you keep claiming you're fucking <laughs> the most American. Show I'm like, us. show us. Yeah. Because I fucking yeah. Do. Ship out with Lindsey Graham and all these exactly. people. That were- <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Go. Yeah. I fucking did. Mm. Yeah. So I'm like, you can't tell me I'm not American and that I'm not patriotic. Yeah. I fucking served for my country. So how, when it comes to um, getting back into this real quick, because we can go on from. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you know that. Everyone knows that here in this room. <laughs> but getting, getting to, um, like, for instance, models of color, right? So I, I kind of... I'm all about models of every color. I like to see a lot more Latinos because I am Latino. I just want to. I just want to see on studios what I see in the real world. Yeah, yeah. That's so what I want to see. Do you have um, followers or fans that contact you that are of color that say, "How do I get into it? How did you do it? How like do do people um, contact you for support?" They do, but I feel like there's there's a certain way to go about it. Okay. Um, I get people who are just demanding this information and it's like, I'm sorry, but I fucking hustled my Mm. fucking ass. I did not have any of this information. I did not have any of this fucking help. I did not know any of this. And I, I stumbled and I fucking like, no, I'm like, you're not going to demand for me to tell you all the fucking secrets that I've learned Mm -hmm. while scraping my fucking knees, like falling and tumbling in this industry. Like, no, I'm like... But I do go in different ways about how to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm not just going to tell you. I'm going to tell everyone else. Mm-hmm. And that's when I get on social media and I'll make a comment about something that either just happened or it's 
hovering mm-hmm. in my head because mm-hmm. I just need to get it out. And it always feels great. It's like, you know what? Maybe someone else is related to this. You know, like I have moments where I have my depression mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm like, this is the honest truth. This is what depression looks like. I'm not going to hide it. This is how I feel. It's not me trying to get sympathy from people. It's no, I'm going to show you like you think I'm this confident, you know, always happy. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I go through my fucking yeah. stages too. I'm going to show you, yeah, you see how real I am. And I, I've cried on camera and I'm like, do I like it? No, it, but it happens mm-hmm. in the moment because that's how I'm feeling in the moment. You know, like that's depression, Mm -hmm. you know, and I apologize, but I also try to educate people of like, okay, I knew I was going through that because I was Mm self-aware and I I made the changes that I had to make to combat in that. But it's because I want to show you from start to finish what it looks like when depression hits or anxiety hits Mm -hmm. and how you can, how real it is, you know, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know how we got sidetracked to that. Well, no, it's, it's, <laughs> well, it's, you know, you show yeah. everybody a, a lot and yeah. that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this was because you, you're vocal. You're very, you, you show everybody everything. Oh, okay. So this is more, this is more of a superficial question, Oh, okay. but I wanted to know, and I know a lot of people do too. Uh, I wanted to start a segment called how to bottom like a pro. Uh, I did one session with Drew Dixon, and uh, he gave me some techniques on how to bottom. Uh, I figured because you were on, maybe ask you if you had a couple tips on uh, telling people how to bottom like a pro. I think I've given them out. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, just let go of quite one. A, there's a let quite, go of one. There's me. quite a chunk <laughs> yeah. on the AVN Men Magazine. Check it out, 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, volume two. <laughs> <laughs> like um, it's in there. No, actually, it's it. Part of it, it's in there, but they just released on their site the full interview. Mm-hmm. Like it's way longer, it okay. goes into depth. Um, but we did cover yeah. bottoming techniques. Yeah. But I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to uh, repeat them. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. don't have to do some the of these. Thing. It's like a these, routine, though. You know, you do your yeah, face. It is, like, it's, so I, I'm it curious. Is a, it is a I'm routine. It is. You can checklist them too. For, you, don't have, <laughs> you don't have to like. It. Where's my pen and paper? Oh, I can't cross that one off. Um, maybe you heard some, you know, from Dolph. No, what did you say? Drew? Drew. Yeah. I heard... think I've, I've told Drew a few of these. Okay. I've, I've told a lot of people a yeah. lot of these, so they're probably repeating them. Breath control. Breath control? Breath control. Okay, he didn't mention that. No? By breath control, what do you mean? So, breath control. By So, when I was in martial arts, I was in Hapkido for five years, oh, wow. and okay. in there, they train you by simple breathing techniques mm-hmm. how to tighten a muscle how to relax a muscle in your body so you have to be aware of your entire body because mm-hmm. every time you do a kick you have to tighten certain parts of your mm-hmm. legs you know like whenever you twist and it's it's all breathing you're <laughs> you know um so in bottoming in a way to relax that part of your body your buttocks um it's simply before they go in i usually take in a deep breath and then as I'm slowly exhaling, you can feel your body start to relax from the top uh-huh. all the way down back your spine down to your hole. So then that relaxes your hole for it to open up. Um, that's the scientific thing for me. <laughs> the second part is you got to want that fucking dick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you got to be hungry for that. Like You got to want, like, yes, I want that inside me. Because it's also mental yeah. on top of that. You know, yeah. it's physical and mental. It's those two things. Either you want it or mm. you don't because you your body will reject something that does not want to be. Yeah. Either. It will reject it and it will tighten. You will, like, you got to listen to your body. Mm. Your body is more aware than you are about energies and anything else. Mm-hmm. And that's just your way of your body protecting you. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't fake it. You got to want it. Mm-hmm. And of course, relax yourself. Yeah. That's, <laughs> no, that's good. I appreciate that. That's, that's fucking amazing. Um, he touched up on, or he touched upon mostly what, you're everything okay? All right. He touched upon or touched mostly on um, cleaning out. So he there's gave me, many yeah he gave me a couple that. techniques for cleaning out this is no but this is good with the breath control I never really thought about that I how know do you, you take big dicks you there breathe, you breathe you do this you do that but I've never never thought about I think you've that seen moment me. In I particular. think if you look back when you shot me you would always hear me right oh. before you know the top would go in you would hear me take a deep breath 
and exhale slowly. I know you've seen them. You yeah. can roll back. I think yeah, you, now can, I'm gonna, yeah. you can. You can look back. Well, speaking of, um, when I did my, I rounded out my time at Dark Alley uh, with a whole bunch of top tens. I had, and I, the only reason why it was a whole bunch of top tens was because it was going to be top 50 at that point. And I thought it was, it was cheapening. Yeah, one. it was kind of <laughs> like, yeah, I know. It was cheapening uh, the. You were just too kind. Yeah, you wanted you know everyone. What? Because there was a lot of, there was, I, I've done so many three ways. I've done so many uh, one-on-ones, groups. And then finally, when I got to the all time, those are my favorite scenes. And the ones he still plays on repeat. Yeah, well, the, the ones that always show up, and I don't know if you know this, but it's been the most retweeted and shared RFC uh, clip, it, even more than the gangbang proposal, which was the top one at the time. Mm-hmm. Since I've posted it, it's been retweeted about 700,000 oh, 700, views and retweeted so many times. And it's you and, and Jed Athens. Do you remember how that all came about, by the way? And that was my room. Oh, my yeah. God. My room does not look like that, people, okay? It, was, it has changed. I have grown. I have matured. <laughs> There, you've seen current pictures of my room. She's more classy. She's grown. <laughs> she doesn't shop at Ikea anymore. Uh, so 2000, what, 2014? Yeah, 2014. Uh, 15, oh, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I've mentioned it. <clears throat> I was late. Uh, and as a military man, I'm sure you noticed. But I was late. I was looking for parking, but I'd gone out the night before. Uh huh. So I was like, oh, my God, I got to shoot this scene. I was so fucking hungover. And I'm thinking to myself... Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go shoot this scene. We'll we'll do it as real time as possible uh, and see what we get. Jet Athens, I, I think he drove himself there um, from LA. Yeah, yeah, from LA. Uh, just because you guys really wanted to do a scene together, and I remember one thing in particular. And this was 2014 before everybody was using iPhones for everything. And I was gonna take a picture for the cover on my iPhone, and you said to me. You're going to take a glamour shot on your iPhone. And I said, oh, my God, you have no idea. It's going to look amazing. And and it did. It did. It ended up being the cover. And then look forward. Everyone's using their phones. Yeah. Now look for at glamour. Us. I, I am. Yeah. Half of the shit you see on my fucking Twitter, yeah. I, I've taken myself on my fucking iPhone. Yeah. So. yeah. But, and but granted, <laughs> you know, the cameras have gotten so much better since way better. But that that was kind of like where it was going to go. And that scene is just fucking phenomenal. I I mean, I think that there was... We probably shot for about half an hour. used 25 minutes of footage. Uh, you guys were really into it, though. That's what makes the scene is the fact that if if you really want it, um, it kind of shows on camera. I mean, same, it's basically the same story for Rocco Steele. Mm. Like, I, don't, I didn't shoot that, did I? No, you didn't. No, no, no. But the fact that I think that people love it is because it was genuine. We were yeah. both hungry for each other. We both, like... We hit each other up mm-hmm. on Twitter and we put out, we're like, who wants to film this? And at that, at that time, Breed It Raw quickly jumped into it. They're like, we'll fucking do it. Yeah. Well, and the fact that it was so quick, it literally, we, we, by the time we talked and we were shooting, it was like four to five days. Hmm. I wish I had jumped on that. I wish I knew. He, I really did. And it was, it was so organic. Mm-hmm. That he was literally, he never he never said action. It was where it started. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to just start getting warmed up with his dick mm-hmm. and stretching out. And before you know it, he's like, "All right, I'm ready for a cum shot." I'm like, "What?" That's amazing. That's perfect. I'm like, wait, you what? didn't even know he was there. You didn't <laughs> you even, didn't know, even know he was there. <laughs> like we That's both good. were so lost mm-hmm. in each other, and I think that was very similar with Jed Athens. Yeah. Was that it was we both were very hungry yeah, for each other. I think I I barely interrupted because I didn't want to. But when you guys came out and were like, I think you had one break in between. Yeah, and that was about it. But I mean, his fucking. What do you call it? The little ring? I yeah, know. he had his Prince Albert. He in had too, his right? Prince Albert, and yeah, I have a small bladder, so he kept hitting it. I was like, I gotta go pee. That's the only time mm. I ever stop is because I gotta pee. Mm. Other than that, I'm like, let's go. But you know, I, f- <laughs> I feel like I, after all these years, what what six years ago, I I should thank you. That was fucking amazing. Oh. Like, and it happened like like we were talking about. It just happened to be organic. And I remember after shooting it, texting um, Owen and saying. Dude, I just got the best fucking seed. And then I think I immediately put it up. I put it up. No, like oh my God. The turnaround. Yeah. I was like, oh, why can't Major Studios be this good? <laughs> I was like, dude, I need to edit this now and put it up. I fucking and shot something for Neural Mail for like last year and mm. it just came out. 
Yeah. I, I'm like, wow. There are times, you know, and I, I tell uh, Treasure Island all the time, um, when you get a good scene like that or when you get a model that you want to put up, uh, put it up immediately. Don't, don't wait because a lot of studios have a lot of material to work with. You got to put that shit up, man. Get your editor working on that overnight. It'll, it'll, you'll reap the benefits of it later. I want to ask you, um, you're still, this is still your career. You're still doing it. What advice do you have for new models coming into to porn and, you know, just for fan models, uh, content creators, and then people getting into the porn industry? My advice is simply to not be gullible and believe a narrative that someone gives you as to how they're going to make you great. They're going to make you famous. If you do this, you do that. If you sign with us, we're going to blow you up because ain't nobody blew me up. I did that shit myself. Mm. Okay. So do not be gullible. Do not sign stupid contracts. Take power back into yourself. You want to make yourself fucking something. Do it your fucking self. Put yourself out there. On top of that, be as genuine as possible and authentically yourself right off the back. Because we live in a world where people want to relate to you. They don't just see you anymore as just a performer. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at Twitter and social media, like... People want to connect with you so much. And if you start right off the back, start out like that, you're already in a great mm -hmm. stride. I'm like, authenticity is so beautiful and so powerful at the same time. And you're, you'll start to feel like you're truly living your true, true authentic self mm -hmm. because you're not allowing someone to tell you, well, we like you with short hair. We like you to be more bulky, lose some weight because we don't like you skinny. You know, mm -hmm. like, no, like, don't listen to them. Like, believe in yourself, trust yourself and whatever you want to accomplish and do, do it yourself, but don't ever, ever, fall into the trap of believing that someone's going to make you into something because they don't got that power. Mm -hmm. Shit. <laughs> I, think, I think you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. I mean, if you had given me that advice, I would take it because of the fact that you've navigated. But then again, I also know a good amount because of following you, how much you've navigated for yourself. Um, and the ups and downs, because we were talking at the time when stuff was going on, mm -hmm. whenever we were at shoots, um, we touched base, you know, mm -hmm. um, even now, I think the last time I saw you was what Berlin. Yeah. And that was just like random at a pizzeria you know, <laughs> two in the morning, two uh, in the morning. Yeah. Yes. Just walked in and I was like, Oh, Hey, <laughs> like, so yeah. So, I mean, random moments, but you know, I'm, I'm constantly watching. I'm constantly listening. I think out of a lot of performers, you piss people off and I enjoy that, but you piss people off because you're yourself. And I think that's very, very admirable. So, um, thank you. In yeah. And in the, uh, in the manner of trying to piss people off too, not because, you know, not for any reason whatsoever, but just by pointing shit out. Um, they I, wouldn't be getting upset if it wasn't true. Exactly. I'm just saying, exactly. So why I, are you upset? Yeah. And that's why I tell people if, if it has nothing to do with you, why are you? Why should you get upset? Why mm -hmm. should it bother you? Mm -hmm. But if it's funny, because to me that just shows me I hit the head in the nail. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like you you wouldn't be getting upset. Yeah, if you knew it wasn't right. So for that, I I do I strive for that. <laughs> I see it in you, and I enjoy it. So thank you. You got to ruffle up some feathers to make some yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to like talk about? Anything you want to promote? Anything you're working on next that you'd like people to know? Well, currently I'm, I'm, I'm besides porn, cause that's kind of slow down, but I'm not mad about it. I'm like, I feel like you're just like chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah. You know, if, if I, if I work for studios, cool. I say, yeah, well, it depends. <laughs> Nowadays yeah. I'm more like picky. Like, yeah. you're going to get me to leave my house for what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, for what again? Like, yeah. oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, I'm currently involved, which is kind of like full circle. It's funny when I got out of the military, I wanted to be away from that as much as possible. But now I'm, bringing myself around other veterans mm -hmm. and 
I'm getting empowered by them. And on top of that, I'm working on a talk show called Cannabis Synergy. We're shooting the pilots in the current episodes right nice. now. Um, and it's called Cannabis Synergy and is literally all veterans. So like oh, nice. okay. everyone, the entire team, we're all veterans. And we literally work so fucking well together because we have that military background of mm-hmm. like, we have this common goal together and we need to get that job, yeah. the job done. I mean, we have the same mission, the same vision um, for the show. And it's simply a place where people can come sit down and ex- express their experience, um, experiences in life and share it with us, mm-hmm. but also to educate people about cannabis and how it has helped a lot of veterans mm-hmm. um, because our, our V system, it's getting better, but it's still fucked up. We still have a lot of veterans that have so many health issues. And th- instead of the VA actually doing something about it, they just hand you more fucking drugs and mm. more pills and more pills to the point where there's a lot of veterans committing suicide because of so much medication mm. they have to fucking take. And this veterans group, we, we smoke cannabis, but we also, a lot of people have to stop taking so many medications mm-hmm. um, from the VA and are just much more happier in their life because of their PTSD, their anxiety, you know, just like all these things that you have to deal with that people don't realize after the military. Um, and you just come together and empower one another. We, we, we do hikes called Veterans Walk and Talk, mm-hmm. and we smoke before a hike and we get all and toasty like joints are being passed around um and then after that we start the hike and we hike and talk Jeez. we get we kind of get to bitch to, uh to each other about the same va issues yeah. or whatever you know what i'm saying or yeah. like good old navy stories or military stories you don't get lost do you <laughs> yeah it's great to just hear it but it's the fact that we're all motivating each other because we a lot of us have injuries back mm-hmm. injuries knee issues all these different things but the fact that we're getting e- each other through mm-hmm this hike you know it just empowers us and shows us that we're not weak we, we we're still strong veterans you know there you know there's there's more to us than mm-hmm. that um but yeah it's I'm, I'm i'm currently just focusing on that um i'm just i just want to make an impact wherever mm-hmm. i go and whatever i do because it things that i'm passionate about things that have saved me and saved a lot of my friends um I, people may joke about cannabis and all that but in reality it has saved mm-hmm. many 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 lives um including my own and my best friend um and on top of that our government likes to use us as pawns the veterans this mm-hmm. veterans that so guess what as veterans, we've come together and we're like, no, it's going to take us to help get this through the line of legalizing cannabis all the way in Washington. It's going to take the voices of veterans speaking up, saying that enough is enough. Like, this is helping us. Mm-hmm. Us, veterans, that you claim that you support us and that you take care of us. Lies. You know, it's like, we know how powerful our voices are and we're using it right now. And that's that's currently where i'm focused at you know but like i said i'm just going with the ways of life right now i'm just chilling if scenes come up i'm so down for it i i love i love acting i love doing all these things you know i I still enjoy this industry Mm -hmm. i really do it has it slowed down absolutely i think people assume that i'm like filming every month i'm like no this hag is dying. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Um, but no, hey, life, you know, brings things into your life for a reason, you mm-hmm. know, and different changes. And I'm just accepting whatever comes to my life. Well, um, in any way you do do it, I think people will benefit from it. So thank you. Yeah. Um, Armand Rizzo, Jesus Christ, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No problem. You know, I, I absolutely fucking appreciate it. Oh. Um, he hit me up and he's like, can you do an interview? I'm like, you need to stop. Like, you, we go back, <laughs> back, I back. Know, but but how know, can I say no to you? Like, there, there are just some times where I I'm feel like, like you need, you, I think you forget the fact that you probably see me now, like, in a different light. Oh but you got to remember, yeah, like, no, I know. I'm still that kid. I'm still that, you know, like the first guy that walked, that little midget guy that walked into, you know, in New York, into the studio in New York. (laughs) I'm still that guy. 
I know, down. but you know, I've I have seen people change. I'm not I'm not saying you have at all, mm-hmm. you, but you just have to kind of prepare yourself just in case. I had somebody, you know, I waved at them after, and I've worked at them various times. I hadn't seen them in like two years. And I'm like, remember me? I just shot you last week. And they're like, <laughs> oh, hey. So, you know, you never know. So I never want to get like, oh, you know, he's my friend. And then eventually, hi, what's your name? <laughs> you yeah. know, like something like that. Granted, you've never done that to me. So I absolutely appreciate no, it. Because I'm not that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're lucky that I have people around me that keep me grounded. Mm. You know, um, and I've been very blessed. I also, I that. also think it's Latin in you. I'm not gonna lie. It's very. We grew up a certain way. We do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we grew, actually. My mother, she gave me to modeling classes and all that stuff, and she's like, "Mijo, whatever you do in life, and how big you will ever get, because I know you will." Mm. Always stay grounded and remember where you come from mm-hmm. and remember the journey that you've been on and you are gonna go through. Mm-hmm. Like remember that because. That's going to help you in life mm-hmm. for you to stay grounded because you will lose yourself, you know? And, and of course a mother never wants her child to lose mm-hmm. themselves, even though I did. Um, but like I said, other people came into my life where they grounded me and they told me what I needed to hear and not what I wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of people, I get annoyed. Like people hit me up and they're like fans and all that. And they're like, I love you. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, that's not what I want to hear. Mm. I'm like, I said, thank you. But then they continue, and it's like, stop. I'm like, yeah. stop. I'm like, I don't need that. Like, can we talk about something else? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, can we talk about politics? Yeah. Talk, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they're like stop. <laughs> yeah. like, I, at a point, it just gets uncomfortable. Yeah, it does. You're absolutely right. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Ganande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory, as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord. And if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. (laughs) 